the pilots other than the plane are the most integral thing you know at this point in time i talking joby here with travis out of california and travis ohio how come Joby's moving from uh, sunny California all the way to Ohio for their first major large-scale production site. I think a, a, a key thing to highlight there off the top is they won't be completely moving there, right? And I, I think that's a something to look at is, so now they're going to have our, their West Coast presence. They'll still you know, be out in Marina because there's obviously down by San Diego, a lot of military use of, of aircraft, but then also at Air Force Base. But then moreover, now you're going to have something in kind of the Midwest that can service the East Coast and middle part of the country in terms of getting these aircraft craft out. That's one piece, but also Dayton, there is all, all the, the history that uh, Joby you know, talked about with the Wright brothers, et cetera, first in flight. But what I think is most important is the government and in particular DOD, they are going to be you know, sharing an airport. I don't think any of us need to read too far between the lines why there was probably some other input outside of, of Joby from maybe external partners of why they landed there. And I thought the amount of government officials also that were involved you know, with the ceremony and a lot of military, you know, I must hate to say it, but when you look out into the crowd and you see a bunch of white hairs, these are the decision makers. These are the guys who've been you know, sitting in these small government seats in these, these localities for a long time, but you don't know their name, but they have a lot of power. A third of a billion dollars in tax incentives, but the factory is only half a billion. So you start to see, okay, well, they just run away with a $120 million EV toll factory. I call that a steal as an investor. We have a billion dollars in the bank. So I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of exciting things. And the cash burn rate right now is around 600 million per year. So Joby is good to cross the finishing line without any additional funding at this moment in time. From what we know, of course, subject to change, but that's good for shareholders that uh, they will not have to raise capital, print more shares and dilute along the way. And, you know, look, we have the runways about two years at this point, hopefully in terms of, you know, the market, we're at least closer to the bottom than, than not. But moreover, in those next two years in terms of burn, there will be some other investment and you can never guarantee that. Obviously that the landscape does change, but let's us not forget that there's a $140 million still left in the Delta contract. It's tied to certain milestones. They haven't publicly put out what those milestones are, but I would presume that you know, some of the goals that we have over the next year and a half, two years, in terms of Joby, would unlock some of that investment. And any estimate, Travis, on how many hours would a pilot from Delta need in order to be qualified to fly an S4 from Joby? That's where we have to lean on the, the FAA. I mean, they've only put out kind of some initial conversation or, or discussion about what that's going to look like based off of its powered thrust or, or what exactly they're going to classify this vehicle as. But I would presume that they're not going to have to go through the full regiment as if you were to become a rotorcraft pilot. Hopefully, there'll be quite a bit of synergy between the two. I think we're probably probably looking at somewhere in the range three to six months because I think it would be based more off of timing than hours. Like what is it going to take to turn on a fleet of Joby aircraft? Well, a fleet of pilots and they're going to have to turn this on in 2025. The time is ticking. We're already to 2024 of how much time it's going to take to train them. So I think it's less about hours now, but in terms of what does that look like? Does the Joby flight program take three months? Does it take six months? They're already putting the NASA pilots um, and some of the test pilots through that. So I think that's that timing um, is, is probably Probably going to be announced, I would presume, sometime in the first half of next year. Just complete gut feeling uh, on that side of things. And Stein, I mean, with your background in aviation, what are your thoughts on training time for existing pilots? Yeah, sure. So normally, if you want to get a type rating for a specific type of aircraft, this is a process which you can complete in a very short amount of time. Three months is very conservative for a type rating. So once there is a training schedule to follow, for this Joby aircraft approved by the FAA, of course, uh, well, then a type rating is done uh, very easily after you are, of course, already in a certified pilot. We've heard from the man who's been at the controls. If three months is what you're looking at, let's just be safe. You know, it's something new. Three to six months. Realistically, let's look at the time frame of that. That's an opportunity for, you know, maybe pilots that are on the verge of retirement. You know, we're already in a pilot shortage. So we're going to have to get creative also in this space, right, too, of how do we offset that? And, and it could be there's kind of dual programs because we're going to have to have new pilots pilots as well. I mean, if Joby was at a fair and they like, put a picture of little kids in the S4, but those are the ones who are going to be, you know, once we get to a scale and making 500 aircraft a year, those are going to be who's flying it, right? It can't be who's pilot today. There just won't be enough. So I think there'll probably be dual parallel programs in that. We'll see. Maybe Joby has their own like official flight school someday. That would be really cool. And also, you know, again, they've already tried to vertically integrate everything else. I don't see why the pilots other than the plane are the most integral thing, you know, at this point in time. I'm happy we don't really touch on autonomy because aircraft, I that's 2030 and beyond. It's not in my investment outlook. 
at all at this point. Yeah, and I can give a bit more color on what different licenses you have uh, as a pilot. There's PPL, which stands for private uh, pilot license. And that's basically the most basic tier where you're not allowed to fly with any uh, commercial uh, aim. Then there's CPL, which is a bit more advanced. And then there's ATPL. The one I was talking about is ATPL level, but I can imagine a world where a Joby aircraft would be CPL level, which is quite easy to attain. It's not that expensive even to get a CPL license today. So if they're able to operate under that CPL license, then you're looking at a way shorter time from going from nothing to becoming a Joby certified pilot. And in terms of the Joby business case, I mean, one thing is time to market. The other thing is, uh, of course, being able to scale up production, then having the infrastructure and the partners in place and then having the pilot. And if Joby brings all these four things together, then they're not only first to market, but they also have very good chance of retaining that leadership and becoming a long-term leader in that industry.